Hey, what's up? Life Old Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the 2001 cult classic film, The Fast and the Furious. This is directed by Rob Cohen. Stars, uh, God, everyone. Paul Walker. Um, why, why are names just escaping my head? Vin Diesel, Jordana Brewster's in this. Uh, so, so many people are in this. Um, Michelle Rodriguez is in this. So this is a, this is a big film because it was a nothing film in 2001 when it came out and then it spurred so many sequels and a universe of itself there's an animated show now on netflix going into its third season soon um it's spurred many many a toys i have from jada toys 2015 to jada toys i have a massive toy collection of from jada the fast and furious cards specifically brian's cars but like i just i need to show off my little dusty thing here but we have Dom's Dodge Charger. We have Brian Slater's Supra. You know, their final race, racing battle at the end. Um, it's, I, I got to dust this. So I've always been very apprehensive to talk about these films because A, I've been a massive Paul Walker fan since the early 90s, uh, thanks to Pleasantville. Um, when he died, I, I, it, it, took, it took me, it was very hard. Very hard. I got a, I got a little skyline outline right here on my wrist. Um, it's, it's still hard to watch him be so happy and energetic and active, you know, from a film that was, what, 20 years ago? 20 years ago. Wow. Long time. But uh, only good things. We'll, we'll discuss only the good things. Okay, so this is the first film in the saga, right? It's, it's about street racing. It's about uh, Dom and his team. They, Leon, Vince, Letty... Jesse, they're, they're, you know, they got their souped up cars. They got, you know, they chase down tractor trailers full of electronics, uh, which sells DVD players and things. This is 20 years old, this film. So this was peak, peak technology at that point. But like, uh, you know, Brian, Paul's character of Brian um, plays, he, he's an undercover cop for the, for LAPD. So he's like infiltrated kind of. But, like, uh, he kind of infiltrated Dom's team, if you will. But he's got feelings for Mia, Playboy Jordana Brewster. So, like, he starts to try to get Letty, not Letty, try to get Mia to, to date him. But, like, Dom is always a issue with that. Like, you can't date my sister's friend. Mia would say that she can't date her brother's friends. But, like, there's always this testosterone flying everywhere. Vince hates Brian for various reasons here and, you know... Jesse talks about his ADD and he's great with engines, but like he can't do anything else. And like everyone is very open and honest with each other, except Brian, who blatantly says he's not a cop, even though he is a cop. So it's a matter of Johnny Tran and his family um, running there. It's not a Chinese gang. It's 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 not really a gang. It's just they have guns and like they run an auto body shop as well as a food market. So like. It's not technically a gang, but, like, I've always wanted Johnny Tran to return from the dead. Because everybody returns from the dead in this franchise. But we haven't seen him yet. And I'm hoping he comes back at some point, to be honest. I, I always liked his character, like, drag racing, uh, not drag racing, at Race Wars. He's, he's racing against Jesse in Jesse's Honda. I thought, I, I just love Johnny Tran's character. I, he just, he's really cool. So, this, this film has the ending of, you know, Brian saves Vince off the tractor trailer that, you know, is starting to shoot at him. That's where eventually in the future we see Vince with all his scars on his arm because the of the wire that he was attached to on the truck. Uh, Brian obviously reveals himself as a cop, gets a medivac to help Vince escape. Then uh, everybody convenes at Dom's house and, you know, Jesse winds up going there to lose this to, to Johnny during race wars, but then he gets shot out by Johnny because Johnny didn't get his car that Jesse had, you know, bet on. So it's it's a lot of shooting back and forth. It's a lot of who, you know, has connections to whom, who's known whom the longest, things of that nature. And it's it's it just broadens up this entire universe moving the films forward. The third film is the most important film in the entire franchise, and we'll get to that. And most people hate the film, but they shouldn't because it's Tokyo Drift. And it's like it brings four, five, and six together, right? It, we'll, we'll get to it. It's a soap opera. I've said this so many times in my means of apprehension of, of, of wanting to talk about these films. The Fast and Furious films as a whole is one major giant soap opera, right? It's, it's defying physics and 
and who has connections where and all over the world and all this stuff. There's not a lot of tech in this film. This film is all about the street race and the, and the you know, running a gang to steal some stuff and things like that, right? This was a very low-key film compared to future films moving forward. The second one, we talk about a drug cartel. The third, we talk about, you know, kingpins in Tokyo and, and all this other stuff. But, like, this, is an, this original film started out with the semi-camera angles on an angle, and then it panned up when the car sped by. I love that. I love that kind of cinematography. I've always loved it, and it's because of these films. These films really brought it out. But why I love these the most and I will say this until my dying breath, and past that, these are the most authentic films you could ever see. Ever. Because these are worldwide films, right? You go to different countries, you see this, the people of that country doing what the people of that country do. Wearing what the people of that country wear. Riding what the people of that country ride. Listening to the music that that country listens to. This film takes place in Los Angeles. That's it, right? So you have your LA street scene represented with music primarily hip-hop represented with clothes represented with drinks represented with uh body language the way people interact with each other it's it's so authentic and these people sweat in this film yes there's cameras everywhere but this is la it's hot you see the actors sweating in a natural sense no one's trying to hide it but you see an authenticity of sweat coming off these people when they talk when they scream when they ride when they run it's it's authentic that's what's awesome about these films is the authenticity i will i will say this forever even past my death these are the most authentic films you will ever see because it accurately portrays the area that it is represented this film takes place in la it represents la in 2001, which was filmed in 2000, probably a little later, 1999. I don't know exact filming dates, but it's a prime example of representation. 2002's Too Fast, Too Furious, we'll talk about when we watch it, but a prime representation of Miami and things of that nature, right? So we're getting heavy meta into this discussion of the Fast and the Furious, which was always supposed to be a cool car show, but like, it's more than a cool car movie. It is way more than just a car film. It is an authentic representation of culture of a time period. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. I'm going to put the glasses back on because we are done talking about the Fast and the Furious. I'm going to put my cars back in their corner. I got to dust that corner. I have my, my, my vinyl, like, original Fast and the Furious movie poster. Like, bro, like, I'm good. I'm good. On to Too Fast, Too Furious. Uchimahalo.